to think of yourself as a persuader, not just a speaker. As a persuader, persuasion is a transference of emotion. You cannot transfer that which you are not experiencing. Why don't you drop that in your notes? You can't transfer that which you're not experiencing. So I'm going to get up here and tell you how important transformational grammar is, or vocabulary, or how much fun it is, but I don't really feel like it's fun, or I thought it was fun, you know, about a month ago, but now it's not fun for me, then you're not going to feel like it's fun either. If I can pull that off, maybe you can generate the emotion without me, but it's highly unlikely the whole group's going to do that. So you've got to start with that course. The core beliefs I wrote down is, I am powerful and effective and people enjoy listening to me. I am powerful and effective and people enjoy listening to me. You've got to come from that core. Now you might say, but Tony, but I've never really spoken public before and stuff. That doesn't matter. See, remember we talked about confidence the other day? I said, I know I'm confident because I'm capable of doing something. Not because I've already done it. If I had to wait until I'd already done something to be confident, there are a lot of things I'd probably never even start. Okay? So you've got to assume the role. You've got to act as if you were already a great speaker. You have to become what it is that you want. So you've got to walk in there. Even if you've never spoken in front of a group before, you've got to walk in there with the physiology and the mind and the state and the belief level that you're powerful and effective and these people want to hear what you have to say. Secondly, you've got to believe that you're humorous. And I'm sure Steve will talk about this today. You've got to believe that you're humorous if you're going to be effective with people. Now, that doesn't mean that you tell about jokes or anything else, but humorous, just by your own loving up on things, you can be humorous. But you've got to believe that basically you're humorous, and what allows me to think I'm humorous is because I can laugh at myself. See, if I can make fun of me, if I can laugh at me, then I definitely get other people to laugh too. Because I've set myself up for a target. Real easy. And if I set myself up for a target, then it also gives me permission to play with somebody else too, right? But you've got to attack you first, you've got to be able to make yourself humorous, you've got to be able to not take yourself too seriously. So core beliefs, I can't stretch them enough. I guess the other one I put down is just that I enjoy persuading. You gotta enjoy the process or you might as well forget it. And I just, I enjoy persuading. I enjoy influencing people so that they go for more choices. So that comes through anytime I speak. Here's the second key, physiology. Physiology comes after belief because if you just try and put the physiology in but you don't have the belief, you don't have a foundation there. You don't have something to back you up, right? So the physiology though comes in immediately. And what I mean by physiology is powerful and flexible. You don't want to just come in there all intense, you're going to be over gradient. You've got to use what's appropriate for the place that you are. And as far as I'm concerned, that means just pretty much putting yourself in a resourceful place. If you're in a resource state, you have the ability to get strong or get relaxed or get balanced. If you can move to all those different states from a physiology like that, then you have a lot more power to be able to influence your audience. But you all know, and have heard me share a lot of times, there is not a time when I go up to do a seminar where I don't put myself above level 10 to start with. That's my checklist under physiology. I make absolutely certain, boom, yes, yes, shh, shh, boom. And then I can relax, but relaxing is at this level. And if I'm gonna relax all the way down to like level eight, I mean, I'm really like mellow jello. But meanwhile, what happens is people get a sense of power and energy from me. Because what I've done is I've opened up every channel. It's like I'm opening up my brain when I do that, not just my physiology in terms of gestures. If you get your entire body at that level of intensity, and what happens is what you're doing is open up circuits that probably weren't usually open. Now when something happens, it's like they're seeing the tip of the iceberg and they think it's a lot of energy. They go, boy, it seems like you'd be a powerful person. They don't have a clue. They have no clue. If, they don't, if I had loaded my full intensity, only a few people have ever seen me do that. I mean, people never forget it. But that intensity is something I've learned to build. Like in martial arts, they talk about building key, key energy. That's what I learned to build intensely. I mean, that's what I can do something and wham, explode. So what I've learned to do, though, is how to use the appropriate amount. Jot down in your notes, don't shoot a cannon at a rabbit. Okay? Okay? It works, but there's no rabbit when you're done. So what I have learned to do is learn how to control, but most people don't have to worry about shooting a cannon at a rabbit. Most people have to learn how to become a cannon first. And you mean learn to become a cannon. Learn to develop that incredible level of power that, boom, you can send energy right into somebody's body just by the way you communicate. See, I'm a big believer, it sounds fluffy, like a total fluff right here, but let me just tell you, when I walk into a room, I fill that room up with my energy. And what I mean by that is I can go into a room, depending on the dimensions and everything else, and I physically, how many of you have seen Carillion photography? So you know that around your body, it's electrical energy, okay? And when you change emotional states, you can see the color and the shape of that shift instantly. This is not woo-woo stuff, it's measured. So I'm a big believer, I can feel it. It's a kinesthetic thing for me. That when I walk in a room, and I can fill the room up with my energy. I make a point, I can send that point into somebody's body. That's my belief. Truly or not, that belief seems to empower me with a lot more congruency and power, and people seem to feel it. But it all comes from physiology. 
So you've got to be able to have that and also be able to be totally mellow in the appropriate context. Like, in this context, man, I've like dropped myself down as low as I can because this room is like, you know, what am I going to do? Plus, I want you guys to be able to relax. I gave you a night off last night because what I'm trying to do is pace your bodies a little bit so that when we go to full gear, you're there and you've got some reserves. I don't want to blow out your reserves. But we're going to crank this mother. You know, and it's going to start out tonight cranking pretty good, okay? So you just need to be ready. If you want to see an awesome clip of a young Tony Robbins, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. All you have to do to persuade someone is do two simple things. One, you have to identify, and ideally, the first step you're going to do is you're going to identify the buying state. 